Questions, questions, questions. Lots of questions right now. It's amazing how the questions start coming out in people's minds. I, I think as they uh, go to bed at night and it's just dark outside, that's when the questions really start coming up. People's minds just start working. This week, a lot of questions have come up. How do we do church? Well, you're seeing how we do church. What happens if we can't even come to the church building? Well, we'll do church from home, one way or another. I figure if Jimmy Fallon and the other tonight hosts, uh, late night TV hosts can do their shows from their homes and can bring in other people from different places around the country from their homes, surely we as a church can continue to minister to our folks with uh, services and messages. Questions have come up. What about church finances? Well, many people have mailed their funds into the church. Some are planning on bringing them in a couple of weeks. We can come back together. You'll notice a donate button there on uh, your screen this morning at home. Easy way to pay your tithes and offerings. Go direct to one of our accounts. You'll still get all kinds of credit. That's enough about money right there. I'm not going to say any more about it. Questions have come about um, how do we handle all the media? Well, we're fortunate in our church. We've got people back in the media and sound booth this morning. They're not six feet apart, but they're married to each other, and so they can be closer than six feet. Uh, how do we conduct a service where people have to be six feet apart? We just make sure we get a tape measure out. We're six feet apart from each other, which you're noticing this morning. How do we minister to people who need help right now? If they need food and deliveries at home, we take it, we put it on their porch, we ring their bell, and we run away like a bunch of kids who are pulling a prank. So they don't have to talk to us, and we don't have to talk to them in person. In the day and age that we live in, <clears throat> we can easily contact people on the phone, FaceTime, other ways. People have questions. They deserve answers. I've been on the phone so much the last week. I told someone the other day, that's what I get paid the big bucks for. People having concerns in their lives right now. People who need some answers. After the day is over, people quiet down. Their questions, their doubts, and their fears come out and the need for answers take over. I want to tell you this morning that it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to have some doubts. It's okay to seek those answers. It's okay to want understanding. In the scripture that uh, Corey read this morning, it comes from John chapter 3. It tells the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night. Who was Nicodemus? Who was he really? <clears throat> Some people said that he came at night because he was too anxious to wait until the day. I've had phone calls from people like that. I've made some phone calls myself at night <clears throat> because I was too anxious to wait until day. There's a simple fact about Nicodemus. He was a man of influence. <clears throat> he was a high-ranking religious official. He had a high position. He had to be very careful. He was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was Israel's most prestigious, prestigious court of 70 prominent leaders recognized as experts in the Mosaic Law. They protected Israel from false teachers and religious heresy. If I were to refer to someone today as a Pharisee, you would understand that person to be all about things and laws and rules and regulations. This was the group that sought to do away with Jesus. Jesus was not of the establishment. You could say Jesus thought outside of the box. And so here was Nick with all these thoughts in his mind. One must know the laws of Moses. One must apply the meaning of the law. One must practice the laws of purity and the proper worship of God. And all those things were in order to get into heaven. Also, all good Israelites saw that anyone born of Jewish parents 
of parents were circumcised on the eighth day were in a covenant relationship with God. The covenant means a promise. Maintenance of that relationship through a human standpoint was through obedience to laws, rules, and regulations. So here comes Nicodemus at night looking for Jesus. I can see him walking down a street quietly through the shadows, trying to keep from being seen, maybe being told where Jesus was staying. But I kind of like to think maybe he found Jesus on a rooftop somewhere, praying and thinking and contemplating. Now, I know what you're thinking, on a rooftop, did he have a ladder? No, many of the homes back then had flat roofs, and uh, people would just take the outside steps that went up to that flat roof. It was kind of like a patio. I understand that. In many places, maybe the kitchen was up there as well. They did their cooking up there, had many of their family events up there. I just kind of think that Jesus would be up there. Anyhow, uh, their basic talk, as you find in John chapter 3, is Nicodemus saying, there's one thing that I do not fully understand. <laughs> Here's this well-educated, trained religious leader. He did not understand the simple concept of new birth. I'm sure he had heard Jesus talking. I'm sure he had seen many things going on. I'm sure that he had, had seen people transform their lives. But he had this simple question to Jesus found in John 3, chapter or verse 4. I, t I, I uh, want to know how a person can be born again when he's old. Simple question. But you need to look back to verses 2 and 3 for uh, a little bit of background there. Because he came to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God because nobody, nobody could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. He went on to say to him, uh, I suppose in between the lines just, saying to him, look, look, I've seen you do this over here, and I've seen you do this here and this here. You had to be from God in order for that to take place. Jesus replied to him, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born. Now, there's something there that, that is just kind of in between the lines. Nicodemus came to Jesus making a statement, and yet Jesus knew exactly what Nicodemus was looking for. And so Jesus got right to the point. You have to be born again. And then came Nicodemus' question. Surely a person cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And then came the scripture that Corey read this morning. I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Now he was talking to Nicodemus' day there. You had a Jewish custom of baptism. When they were baptized, they promised to renounce idolatry. They promised, a person would promise to take the God of Israel for their God. They promised to conform life to the concepts of divine law. And, and we do baptism today, and, and the, the whole symbolism is that the water washes us clean. Jesus was talking about rites of purification. Nicodemus could understand that. If you go back to Numbers chapter 19, around verses 11 through 22, you find some things there about purification. If a person touched a corpse, a human bone, or a grave, they were impure for seven days. They would wash with water on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, they would wash their clothes. They would take a bath and then... Then, when nightfall came, they were considered clean once again. When a woman gave birth, she was unclean for a specified time. And then after that specified time and certain things, she was clean again. Purity came from ceremony. We're beginning to understand this purity thing. Wash your hands for 20 seconds and lather them up real good and sing happy birthday to me or holiness unto the Lord or any number of things and, and wash your hands that whole time and lather them up really good and it'll kill the germs. 
We're doing things this morning. We came in and got all the microphones turned on, and, and then we took a Clorox disinfectant wipe and wiped them clean and put them back in the cradle so that mine or Kurt's germs would not be on them, but only those who were using those Mike's germs, and we're going to cleanse them again when you're all done. We have cleansed doors around the church and doorknobs and, and, and pews, which don't matter right now because there's just six of us here this morning. Rites of purification. Purity came from ceremony. And then they could have fellowship together. Once you were clean, you could have fellowship together. And it didn't have to be six feet apart. Cleanliness, purity, holiness, if you will. To understand Nick's thoughts, you have to understand all of that. You also have to understand that Nicodemus came from the old concept of, I have to do all this cleanliness on my own. We sometimes have the attitude, my willpower, I must have a change of mind. I must do this. I must stay away from the junk food so I will lose weight. I must go here and there. I must do this and this and that if I'm going to be a better person. Nicodemus stated to Jesus, You are a teacher who has come from God. Only someone in touch with God can really do miracles. Nicodemus had seen people change without them even trying to do it. Jesus touched them and they changed. Jesus touched them and they were healed. Jesus walked with them and talked with them. Jesus allowed his garments to be touched and the person was healed. Nothing they did on their own. A person who was full of demons was all of a sudden free to live the way they needed to do. Nothing they did on their own. It came because Jesus did it. Nicodemus was reaching out to Jesus' identity. <laughs> Jesus didn't want an identity lesson. He wanted to get into the operations manual for Christianity 101. You have to be washed clean. You have to be born of the Spirit. He says there in verse 6, Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. And he goes on to talk a little bit more about the Spirit. An inner work where we do all of the above living cleanliness automatic. We do it without thinking. It's done without anything that we do because the Holy Spirit does us. The water washes and cleanses, but the Spirit makes holy and purifies the inner workings of our life. We are born again in action. We're born again in attitude. We are born again in desires. I keep asking myself a question these days. What are we going to learn from everything that's going on in the world right now? What are we going to do? learn that's going to change our lives so dramatically? This is a focal point in history. People being locked in all around the world, being given restrictions. What is it going to do to us? We're seeing stories of people going out on their balconies and apartment buildings and all of a sudden breaking out in song together, all of a sudden applauding health workers together that are walking down the streets. We're hearing amazing stories of people just reaching out and helping others. We're going to be changed. We also need to remember to be changed through the power of God. Jesus taught Nicodemus three things. First of all was the amazing gift of life, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here's Nicodemus talking to Jesus. Jesus was about ready to go to the cross. He was about ready to go through pure torture in his life, in his physical, earthly life, for you and I. It came out of love. And as Jesus talked to Nicodemus, we come on down to that verse, John 3, 16, that Jesus refers to there, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only begotten son, love. The amazing gift of love that came from God to you and I. We need to remember that at this Easter season. Jesus died on the cross out of love so that we could be forgiven of our sins, so we could be washed clean by his blood, so we can go to heaven someday and live with him. The second thing is there, the amazing gift of eternal life. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I'm going to tell you, we're all going to physically die someday. I've had seven or eight funerals in the last year. It's just a reminder that the body gives way and that things happen, that, that tragedies come and that, that, yes, our physical bodies leave this earth. But we're talking about spiritual life here, living with God as opposed to our spirit going the other direction. We have the amazing gift of eternal spiritual life. I suppose we could say it's the fountain of youth, spiritually. Constantly being renewed by God, constantly being renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit, constantly sending us on to where someday we can reign in heaven with God. And then we have the amazing gift of fellowship with God through Jesus. That's something that we desperately need to remember here as we live in this day and age, this time right now, the day and age where, where is the end of the world coming? Who knows? But we can have fellowship with God through Jesus. There's, there's a song that, it's an old time song, and uh, I've often snickered at the song, now it's just Jesus and me. A long life's pathway. I don't need anybody else, just Jesus and me. And I've said so many times that we need that Christian fellowship of our other people. But right now, with the way things are going and, and regulations have been put on people, in many cases right now, it is just Jesus and me. Might be that occasional phone call from somebody, but many people it's right now just Jesus and me. You see, my relationship to Jesus is the most important relationship I have or ever will have. Everything else rests on that foundation. It's Jesus and me, and then others. But Jesus and me is the most important one. It's my foundation. Nicodemus was transformed. How do we know that? I don't see any other mentions of Nicodemus here after this main story. I can only assume he continued being of the uh, member of the Sanhedrin. I can only assume he continued doing daily what he did. It tells me that we need to be witnesses and people of integrity with God's armor on every day, everywhere we go and whatever we do. I need the power of God with me to carry through. And I believe that Nicodemus had that because we find Nicodemus again in John chapter 19 at the tomb. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea went to embalm his body and lay it in a tomb. From that point where he met with Jesus and he continued living, he had newfound respect for Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. He understood what it meant to have the power of the Spirit in his life. He understood what it meant to be walking with Jesus. He understood what it meant to have eternal life. I believe that he turned his life around that very day, that very night that he talked to Jesus Christ. Here's some final thoughts that I have. If you want peace in your life, it's okay to go to Jesus in the secret hours of the night. He'll make it all well with your soul. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to talk to God. It's okay to say, what about this and what about that? Because when you talk to Him, you're going to find it's okay with your soul. And when your questions are answered... You're going to find praise and thanksgiving and glorifying God, not just at night when you talk to Him quietly, but in the daylight where you can be unashamed and ready to worship Him and ready to share with Him. And He will carry you through anything and everything that 